James chapter 1, and let's begin our reading at verse 19. James writes, remember this, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and should not get angry easily. An angry person doesn't do what God approves of. So get rid of all immoral behavior and all the wicked things you do. Humbly accept the word that God has placed in you. This word can save you. Amen. <laughs> this, this book is unlike any other book on your shelf. This, this book has a power. <laughs> it, ha it has a supernatural power that no other book possesses. It, it has the power to literally change lives. And, and the reason that it has that kind of power is because it is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Verse 22, do what God's word says. Don't merely listen to it or you will fool yourselves. If someone listens to God's word but doesn't do what it says, he's like a person who looks at his face in a mirror, studies his features, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. However, the person who continues to study God's perfect laws that make people free and who remains committed to them will be what? Will be blessed. So if we will do what this good book says, we will live a blessed life. Amen? Don't you believe that? James says there's three things, three prerequisites for receiving God's blessing from his word. First of all, we've got to receive God's word. We've got to receive it. Verse 21 says, humbly accept the word. Uh, that word accept in the original Greek is a, is a hospitality term. It means come on in. It means uh, to welcome. It means to receive. We've got to have open ears. We've got to have an open mind. We've got to have an open heart to receive to receive, what do I say at the end of every sermon nearly? Do you receive God's word? <laughs> I hope today that you'll receive God's word. We, we will live a blessed life when we receive God's word. And second, we will, we will receive the blessings of God. Second, when we reflect, when we reflect his word. In verse 23, James likens God's word to a mirror. Now, what's the purpose of a, of a mirror? Well, it, it helps you assess the damage from the night before. <laughs> it's kind of frightening to look at yourself in the mirror in, in the morning, isn't it? Uh, the mirror helps you to see things that, that you can't see. Uh, a mirror gives you, unfortunately, an honest look at yourself. Mirrors, you've heard this, mirrors don't lie. I'm just so glad they don't laugh out loud. Amen. <laughs> the, the same is true of God's word. When you read it, and this is why a lot of people don't read God's word. Because it's like a mirror. It shows you for who you really are. It exposes the darkness of, the, of your life. And it, and it points out the things in your heart that, that maybe you, you, you wouldn't know otherwise. It, it reveals the, the real you. It shows you what needs to be tidied up in your life. So here, here, when you look at yourself in the mirror of God's word, ask yourself these three questions. This is going to be important. To, it'll help you. First of all, as I read God's word and it speaks to me, ask yourself, is there a is there a sin to confess? Has God's word pointed out something in my life that is unlike Christ? It may, it might be a, it may not be a blatant sin that, that many of us call sin. It may be, a, be an unkind attitude or, or an impure thought or maybe a little bit of anger or bitterness is trying to take root. Is there a sin to confess? You know, the wonderful promise of God's word is if we confess our sins, he is what? He is faithful and he is just and he will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The second question is this. Is there a promise 
to claim. Aren't you glad for the promises of God's word? Now, do you have a promise from God's word that you rely on and that you can claim? Third, is there an example to follow? We will live a blessed life if we receive God's word, if we reflect God's word, and finally, we'll live, we'll live a blessed life when we respond to God's word. Verse 22, James says, do not deceive yourselves by just listening to his word. Instead, put it into practice. So what good is it to look at yourself in the mirror, but you don't fix what needs fixing in your life? But the bottom line is, if we don't do what the Bible says, it's absolutely meaningless to us. But if we put it into practice, we will live a blessed life. Amen? Here's what it says. There's a blessing when we respond to God's word. Verse 25, the person who continues to study God's perfect laws that make people free and who remains committed to them will be blessed. Mm -hmm.